my Petlitterers, it's so nice to see you and I've got a surprise for you. I have decided to make a bonus video for you to show you how to create this beautiful watercolor florals wreath. You can use the free brushes you already have for this or if you would like you could also get the set of florals brushes I'm using in this video. It's totally up to you, the technique is exactly the same. You can also use the template you already have from the previous Show Me Your Floral series. The florals brushes I'm going to use consist of a set of 30 different florals and they have all been hand painted by Stephanie Fehrenbach and then I've converted them into Procreate brushes. If you want to see what they all look like, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Now let's get started with our wreath and in order to do that we'll create a new layer and then we are going to create a circle first which helps to guide us and just to make sure that wreath is going to be reasonably round. For this you can use any brush really, any monoline brush is fine and I'm using my totally crispy brush here. Let's create a quick shape circle and in order to do that you can create a random circle and then hold down your apple pencil until the circle snaps into place. And then you'll see here that there is an edit shape menu popping up at the top. So we tap on that and then tap circle and now we have got a circle just like that. All right and then we'll select the arrow key here to get rid of that selection and now we want to arrange the circle on the page a little bit just to make it nice and centered. Also make sure that you leave a little bit of space around your circle because some of the leaves are going to pop outside the circle and so we just want to give ourselves a little bit of room to work with. So now this circle is a little bit thick so what you can do now if you don't want it to be this thick you can decrease the opacity a little bit because this is just something we need as a little guide so it doesn't need to be super black. So this looks pretty good and then also make sure you select a new layer to create your florals. Every time we add a new flower or any leaves or branches or anything we are going to start with a new layer. Alright and then I'm also going to change my color. I've actually created a whole new color palette for this so definitely feel free to do this as well to match the mood of your florals wreath. Alright so let's start with a dark green color and then let's select our florals brushes and for the base of our wreath let's use that burning bush brush and this is what it looks like. It's creating a nice little shape here and now what we do is we arrange those leaves along the circle to create the wreath. So select the arrow tool to select your leaves and then arrange them along the lines of the circle. So now you see here how it pops out a little bit so now what we can do is select the warp tool and then you can bend the shape along the circle and align it nicely like this. So now this looks pretty good and then you might or might not like to keep the end here of the leaves. I'm going to erase them and to erase parts of your leaves I recommend that you use the soft airbrush because it doesn't create harsh edges. You can just softly erase what you don't want. Okay so this looks good so now we are going to repeat the same thing along the remainder of our circle. Make sure you create a new layer every time you create your stem like this so that we can move the leaves around individually and then place them on the wreath like this. You can also resize it a little bit if maybe it's not quite big enough but this looks pretty good to me and then you want to do that warp again just to adjust it ever so slightly like this and then let's erase the end here a little bit as well. Okay and then we are going to repeat that same process until we filled all the gaps on the circle. So now the base of our wreath is complete and you can see what's really nice about this is that the leaves are not all exactly the same size so that gives it a nice organic look and it doesn't feel like you've just used the same brush stem over and over. I think I'm going to adjust this leaf here a little bit and again you'll notice the benefit of using the different layers is that you can now go in and you can individually adjust the parts of your wreath like this which is very helpful. You can now go in and match up the start and the end of your leaves and then connect them all together. Let's group these layers and then create a new layer but let's also create a copy of all the layers and then flatten the group. You see how I'm keeping a copy of my original layers in case 
case I want to go in later and change something. But for now, having only one layer makes it much easier to work with. So now it's time to add our florals. And I really like using the dahlias you see here. We've got two different shapes with a slight variation. So let's see what they look like. For the first one, I'll use a dark red color and then I'll just place that dahlia here, sort of on the edge of where the leaves meet so we can hide those and then fill the gaps a little bit more. I recommend that you create some slightly different sizes and also don't put them all on evenly, but space them out a little bit differently. And then let's create a new layer and let's add some of the second dahlia shapes here as well. If you feel like you've placed your shape in the wrong place, you can move it by using the shape selection tool and then move the shape and maybe rotate it a little bit as well. All right, and then we are also going to add some roses. Again, choose a new layer and then for the roses, I think I'm going to make them slightly different read. To start with, I'm going to put the rose here in the middle. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to show you what it looks like. You'll notice that this rose is a lot paler than the dahlia. So let's intensify this a little bit more by duplicating the layer. And then you'll see here how now this creates a bit more contrast between the light and the dark parts of your rose. So now we merge these two layers and then we have a rose that kind of matches what we already have with the dahlias. So now you also see that the rose has little leaves here already. So you might like to keep them or you could also remove them if you don't like them. But I like to keep them for now. But the stem here I don't like so much. So let's erase this. And it's much easier to do it here before you place it on your wreath because it's easier to see what you need to erase. And again, we are using the soft airbrush to create a nice smooth edge so that it blends in nicely with the rest of our composition. And then of course, we want to make the leaves green here rather than red. And in order to do that, let's lock the alpha channel of this layer. Tap on the layer thumbnail and then select alpha lock. And now you can paint in the green color for the leaves. For this, I also recommend using one of the soft airbrushes and set it to about 60% opacity to make the colors blend into each other. And then let's choose a slightly different shade of green here to paint in some highlights as well. Once you like your rose, you can place it on the wreath and just turn it around until you find a nice place for it. You can also slightly resize it if you like. Don't worry about the leaves that are underneath the rose. I'll show you how you can get rid of them in a second. Let's put the rose here. I think that looks nice and I think it would be really nice if we had another rose. So now, because we've put all the effort into making this rose nice and beautiful, let's just duplicate the layer and then grab it and then place it maybe here. And in this case, I really recommend that you turn it around so it doesn't look like it's exactly the same. But you can see by just turning it around, this rose already looks quite different and no one can even tell that they're the same. And of course, you could also find some other places where you might want to put some more roses. But I think this looks pretty good the way it is right now. Now, we don't need our guidelines anymore, so we can just hide this layer. What you might like to consider now is rearranging some of the dahlias. I feel like this one here for some reason I think it needs to be moved a little bit further this way ever so slightly and now I think this looks pretty good. So now the next step is to remove some of the leaves that are underneath the flowers to make them come through a little bit nicer and of course you already know how to do that from our previous videos right? You can either create a layer mask or you can use the eraser tool to erase part of the leaves that you don't like. I've decided to be brave this time and use the eraser, but it's definitely more professional and safe to use the layer mask feature here. Now, one of the decisions you might like to make is whether or not the leaves pop through where there is this white space underneath your flowers. So you might choose to leave them, but in my case, I actually prefer if they're all gone. And I actually quite like the white coming through, even though it's probably not natural. Naturally, you would have this leaf here come through, but I quite like the white space. So I'm just going to erase the leaves everywhere. I really like how it makes the rose pop out and it's not really noticeable noticeable that there is no continuation of the leaves here. So I think this actually looks quite nice. And what's nice about doing this and using this brush here is that you can leave a little bit of your green at the edge of the flower. And then you can see that it creates sort of like a darker edge and it actually looks quite nice. And it creates that watercolor look that we love so much. 
So you don't have to be too precise. You can also leave a little bit of the green color around the edge. It kind of enhances the look, so I don't mind this too much. And then let's just go around and let's erase all the leaves that we don't need. So this is going to take a little while and you might think this might be a little bit tedious, but I actually find this quite therapeutic. Sometimes I like doing this, especially if I don't feel very creative or if I feel like I just want to do something, but I don't have any ideas, then this type of activity is really relaxing. It's like coloring in a coloring book or picking fruit in Animal Crossing. It's the type of activity which might feel boring, but it's actually really nice and therapeutic. And here's our finished wreath. This looks quite nice already, but let me show you some additional tricks you might like to learn as well. So the first one is that color. So obviously these are fall colors and I quite like them, but you might like to change things up a little bit. And the easiest way to do this is selecting one of the layers. And you can see we still have all the layers intact. And this is quite crucial for the step. So now we can select the layer with the green leaves and then let's bring up the hue saturation and brightness control and let's see what happens if we change the hue of that green. You might like to make it a little bit more towards that blue or that yellow. So you can slide the hue slider to either side and then see which setting you prefer. Definitely also try different saturation and brightness values here as well. I always really like doing this just to see what it looks like. And then we're also going to do the same thing with the dahlias. And now over to you. You now know all the fundamentals of watercolor florals on your iPad. If you would like to learn more, I also have two very in-depth courses. The first one is called iPad Watercolor Wonders, where you can learn even more about watercolor painting on your iPad. And then the second course is my ultimate guide to Procreate 5 course, where I'm teaching everything about Procreate 5, including how to make your own brushes. I'm going to leave links in the description box of this video and also for the floral brushes that I'm using in this video. If you like this series, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.